We're going to be talking today about the Great Commission churches and an example of mind control that actually came from communication that I received from one of them in relation to one of the videos that I put out. And this goes along with a email conversation that uh, they tried to make it a phone conversation, but I wasn't gonna have it, uh, that I had when I first put out my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts. And it, it was just mind blowing to me how every communication that I have with them is an example of mind control in the midst of them denying all of the claims that I made in the book about how they use mind control and how they are a cult. And so I thought I would share that with you today. And um, so just to give you a bit, bit of the highlights of this. He says, oh, and this is people of the free gift, wherever we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content related to cults and how to share the gospel with them. So he says, Jay Oaks, it really baffles me that you accuse GCM of being a cult when you yourself have not sat down to personally interview the men whose names you are slandering here on this video. And that right there is kind of a, a logical fallacy to say that it's a requirement in order to know anything about anybody, you have to ask them directly when these are people who have made statements and are part of organizations that are very public and it's very obvious um, that, it, that the truth is in the, the research. Uh, these things are well stated out there. So that's the first thing I have to say about this letter. And then he goes on to immediately jumps in. Shame on you and your people of the free gift. And shame on the other Christians who are corroborating to your smear campaign. So all of you who are watching this video, shame on you and shame on me. That exactly, absolutely, that use of shame and that wishing of shame upon people, um, that is very mind controlish. okay? And it's something that a cult would definitely and viciously do to destroy anyone who is not part of the cultic scheme. So now he's turned the tables and he's actually said, calls us a cult. You know, shame on you for calling us a cult. You're the cult. So should I say shame on him in return? How does that work? Okay, so going on. You are not the first one to publicize denigrating media against the brethren. Okay, so ask yourself, and I've, I've, I've asked this question of them, why is it that you have to devote good portions of your website to explaining why you're not a cult? And, and we're going to go on to talk about that a little bit more. Okay, and he says whose goal is to love God, love people, share the love of Christ, carry each other's burdens, pray for one another, and yes, obey God's command to go in all to, into all the world. That's not the part we have a problem with. Okay, That's what every Christian uh, organization says that it does. And if you are just talking about that, no one is criticizing you because you love God, you love people, you share the love of Christ, carry each other's burdens, pray for one another, and obey God's command to go into all the world. That's not what anybody is you know, criticizing you for. And so that's like a false, that's a straw man thing. Okay? I have been aware of all the gossip you are spreading here, like morsels served with coffee at the bakery shop for the weak-minded to hear and to pass judgment. So again, he's criticizing you. If you're listening to me, he's calling you weak-minded and saying that you're just here to pass judgment. And then he goes on, I can assure you that for every situation or issue you mentioned in past judgment over, they were dealt with through the filter of scripture, such as Matthew 18, 15 through 17. So if you notice, he did not deny that what I said is true. He says, those things have been dealt with. But the truth of the matter is those things have not been dealt with. The people who are coming out of this cult now are complaining of the same things that they were back then before the so-called strengths and weaknesses paper was released. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, look back at my previous videos on the GCM, okay? 
Be sure of this, the scriptural warning found in James 4.17 cuts both ways. Here's what James 4.17 says, Therefore to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. And so what she's basically saying to me, or what he's basically saying to me is, you know what the good thing is to do, and you're not doing it, so you are a sinner. Okay? If you think you are holier than now, remember that God is sovereign judge and ruler. I have personally known, prayed with, labored with, shared with, ministered with, sacrificed with since 1977 before the name Great Commission Ministries Churches was designated by common mutual agreement and give true testimony to the fact that Great Commission is not a cult just as much as you would claim that your people of the free gift venue isn't one either. And I challenge anybody to find anything about anything that I'm doing that would meet the criteria of a cult that I've laid out very clearly. Okay, you're comparing apples and oranges. And give true testimony to the fact that Great Commission is not a cult. I challenge you to stop your malicious campaign and go talk to the right people. This is another thing, like, they want me to make sure that I talk to them. Talk to the right people. That sounds kind of like intellectual control, mind control. Talk to the right people. You're not looking at the right sources. You're looking at that internet. You're looking at people who came out of the movement and say that these things happen. You're not talking to the right people. Well, every time I talk to the so-called right people, you show me evidence of the very things that everybody else is complaining about. Not those who saw from a distance. Okay, and again, he's he's not listening to what I'm saying. Okay, I, these are this is talking with people and sharing with people and looking at the testimonies of people who were a part of the movement. I get that you have been a part of the movement and you should have left a long time ago. Honestly, you were a part of the movement way back before any of anything got changed or even attempted to get changed before anybody called it a cult. And even at this point, you still haven't left the movement. And these are the guys that are the most dangerous. The ones who have stayed through all of that stuff. These are the ones who have it so ingrained in him that he cannot help but communicate this way. Okay, for each accusation here, there is a legitimate explanation that involved much humbling prayer and consideration for those who are innocent of any wrongdoing. I love what he does here. He says he doesn't deny that the accusations that are being made by me and by others that are out there, that those things really actually happened. But then he turns right around and says, you know, like we were humbled and we were considered, but they didn't actually do anything wrong. The organization, and I asked this of another guy in the organization who contacted me, is the organization ever wrong? And yet still the devil is out spewing lies and deception. 1 Peter 5, 8. My advice to you is don't be the idiot caught in the devil's lie. Wow, now he's calling me an idiot. I keep in touch daily with those dear legitimate brothers and sisters in the Lord over social media. Trust me, there is no mind control here. Yes, there is. And I've just detailed how you're using it even in this very communication where you're trying to tell me that there's no mind control. True Christianity in this country is at an all-time low at 19%. You should be spending your time praying for our churches and for the Lord to send laborers to the field that is ripe for harvest before the Lord comes. Okay, so you should be praying and spending your time praying for us because we're the ones that are actually doing this. We're the only true believers. We're the only ones. And, you know, since time is short and Christianity is at an all-time low, then can't we just be friends and can't you just focus on doing the right thing? And here's what Paul says to the elders in Ephesus in Acts 20, 28. He says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. And he goes on to say, talk about those who are going to be ravenous wolves who are going to come in amongst the flock, and they're going to try and take them out. And our job is to protect the flock.
Okay. And so the last thing he closes with, the field is ready for harvest before the Lord comes in the clouds to call us to be with him, which that whole second coming scare tactic, you know, time is short, this is urgent, and, you know, you want to be saved from the wrath of God thing. Okay, so I want to know what you think about this. Do you think I'm blowing this out of proportion? Do you see the mind control? If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch my videos on mind control and... I would love to hear what you have to say. If you have a question, you have an insight I didn't cover, put it in the comments down below and I'll be taking some of those for next week's Q&A videos. And until next time, uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. If you like the content for today, share this video with others who um, are interested in cults and how to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And stay tuned for tomorrow's video, which is going to be on the commonalities, uh, the connection between Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, the LDS Church, the Masons, and the Jesuits, Illuminati, and the Knights of Malta. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.